Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm back down here in Florida, one of my favorite places to look for reptiles and amphibians. But you guys might remember about a year ago, I did a video called the seven invasive reptiles that you might not even know are invasive or whatever I called that video. It's right there if you want to check that out. Unfortunately, there are so many invasive and non-native reptiles and amphibians here in Florida. I decided to do a part two to that video. And in this video, I'm going to zigzag across Florida and introduce you guys to a few reptiles and a few amphibians that are both invasive and non-native here in Florida. I'm Dave Kaufman and these are my reptile adventures. Rainbow Mealworms is not only a proud sponsor of this channel, they are the premier source for all your reptile food needs. They grow all of their quality insects in-house and I use them exclusively for all my insect eating reptiles. So place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net or click the link in the description below. So before I take my road trip to find these invasive and non-native species here in Florida, let's talk a little bit about the difference between invasive and non-native. Non-native simply means that the animals have established themselves in a place in the world where they are not naturally native. They do very little damage to the ecosystem. They just basically exist and thrive in a geographic area where they are not naturally native. Invasive means all of what I just said except that they are causing harm to the natural environment that they have basically set up camp in. So that is the difference between non-native and invasive. And here in Florida, there are both non-native and invasive reptiles and amphibians. This is a Brimini blind snake, and these are, in fact, blind snakes. They do have eyes, but they're so rudimentary that they don't even use their eyes. They use their sense of smell and their sense of touch to find ant colonies, and these guys live almost exclusively off of ant eggs and ant larvae, including fire ants. So it's very interesting that one of the most invasive species out here that's doing the most damage, which are fire ants, are actually being controlled by another invasive species, and that's this little blind snake. And these are so small and so secretive that sometimes you can flip a log or a rock out here, not even see that they're under there. Or you may even think that these are a worm. But the Bohemini blind snake, as I said, is not native. They were first documented in the state in 1979. They really don't cause a lot of damage to the ecosystem here in Florida, and they cause no threats to native animals in the ecosystem. It's interesting that this snake has been introduced to every continent in the world via the shipment of potted plants throughout the world. And that happened so long ago, no one is really sure where they might actually be native to. West Africa is the most likely place, though. This is the most widespread terrestrial species in the world due to it being parthenogenic, which means that every snake in existence is female, and no male is needed for reproduction. They are non-venomous and completely fossorial, meaning that they burrow and spend most of their time underground. These blind snakes are the smallest known species in the world, and they can either lay eggs or bear live young of up to eight offspring at a time, which are all female, and all genetically identical. One of the biggest species of geckos in the world, and certainly the biggest species not native to here in Florida, is that guy up in the tree right there. 
That is a Tokay gecko, and it was first spotted in Florida around 1965. They are native to Southeast Asia, and it's likely they came over on plant shipments and the trade of other goods. The pet trade is often blamed for them being released in the wild, but the reality is that in 1965, until around the early 1990s, no one really kept these lizards as pets. There are some historical documents that show that these may have been purposely released in Florida by people to control cockroaches and other pest insects. Even so, Florida officials consider the introduction of tokays to be a mild threat to native wildlife, and there is no major effort to eradicate them. Florida's neotropical climate is a perfect place for them to feel at home, and tokay geckos have been recorded throughout the lower third of Florida, but mainly in the southeast part and on the Keys, like here in Key Largo. So, look at this. We got that tokay gecko out of that tree, and he is not at all happy. So when I was in Thailand, we were catching these in their native range and I got bit by one of these and it drew a lot of blood and look at this guy, he is ready to do it to me again. But I am going to hold him in such a way so that I hope that we don't have a repeat of that. But I wanted to give you a real quick look at his coloration up close. He's got these beautiful blue spots and red spots and if you look at him kind of from a distance it gives him kind of a purple hue to him but if you look at that tail you can definitely see that he does have a regenerated tail so at one point she lost her tail right about here and then all of this is new growth. But these guys are very invasive here on Key Largo. These are basically all over the island. And these are again, native to Southeast Asia. And man, we were finding tons of these in Thailand. But this is the first one that I have found here in Florida. Catalia, who is with me, whose link is in the description below, <laughs> she's actually going to take this one home and give it a good home. We're not going to release this back into the wild here in Key Largo. These are one of the prettiest and the meanest invasive species that you can find here in Florida. So you can't really talk about Florida's invasive reptiles without also talking about Florida's invasive amphibians. And the invasive amphibians that are here in Florida, well, they're even more destructive than Florida's invasive reptiles. And the most destructive one is that guy sitting right there on that post. That is a Cuban tree frog. And out of all of Florida's invasive plants and animals, that big tree frog right there could be doing more damage to the native flora and fauna here in Florida than almost any other invasive species in the state. Well, that kind of gives you an idea of how big these frogs are. They are really huge tree frogs. Yeah. And these are the frogs that are eating all the native frogs. Gosh. These are completely out competing them for food. <laughs> and then they're using them as food. That is a very large tree frog, and I could see why he's uh, able to eat so many other frogs. Species. Exactly. He's gigantic. Exactly. He's great at jumping and landing exactly where, where he wants to go. Nothing like my dumpy tree frogs. Right. The Cuban tree frog, as its name suggests, is native to Cuba, but also the Cayman Islands and the Bahamas. These tree frogs were thought to have accidentally been brought to Florida in the 1920s as hitchhikers in cargo containers on ships. Cuban tree frogs are considered invasive in Florida because they harm native ecosystems and also cause a lot of other problems. Cuban tree frogs eat at least five different species of native frogs and their tadpoles compete with native tadpoles for space and food. Cuban tree frogs are common in urban areas where they hang out near lights on walls of houses and catch insects. They grow large and are known to cause costly power outages by short-circuiting utility switches. They're the only frog in Florida that has ever been known to do that. Aside from all this, they are decimating native amphibian populations by eating frogs smaller than they are, like the squirrel tree frog and also green tree frogs. However, there is a glimmer of hope. It's been recorded that Cuban tree frogs are preyed upon by racers, yellow rat snakes, ribbon snakes, and garter snakes, as well as barred owls, alligators, raccoons, opossums, and other birds of prey. Unfortunately, there is little being done to fix this problem, and in another 20 to 40 years, the Cuban tree frog may very well be the only tree frog left in certain parts of Florida. Another commonly seen non-native reptile in central and south Florida is one way up in the canopy of these trees. That 
is the veiled chameleon. They were first reported in the wild in Florida in 2002, and a study showed that aside from competing for insect prey from native insect eaters, there is little to no threat to native wildlife or the ecosystem. Veiled chameleons are native to the southwestern coastal regions of Saudi Arabia and western Yemen, where it inhabits coastal regions, inland river valleys, and agricultural lands where there is more moisture. In a one-year period, over a hundred individuals of all sizes has been captured at just one site in Fort Myers. Because females are sexually mature at five to six months and can lay up to 85 eggs at a time, where they are found in Florida, they are very common and you can find several dozen in a single night sometimes. A study of these chameleons in a Florida agricultural grove found that they ate mostly agricultural pests like weevils, stink bugs, and caterpillars. Veiled chameleons are breeding in rural areas of Fort Myers and Lee County, and also in Collier, Miami-Dade, and Broward counties as well. Chances are, you've probably seen one of these up in a tree while driving down lonely roads at night. They seem to glow in the headlights, or in the light from a flashlight. Because they cause very little damage to native wildlife in the ecosystem, veiled chameleons are considered non-native, not invasive. But where they're found in Florida? Well, those populations are going to remain in the wild for some time. So when it comes to the king of invasive species here in Florida, the one species that everyone around the world knows about, but the one that is most misunderstood is that little guy crossing the road right over there. That is the Burmese python here in South Florida. Burmese pythons are notorious in Florida. Everyone around the world has heard stories of giant snakes that could eat a man in the Everglades. Of course, these stories aren't true. Burmese pythons don't eat people. As a matter of fact, no snake species on the planet actually eats people. But they do have a nasty reputation in the media. Once again, the pet trade is blamed for their release. But it has been proven that Hurricane Andrew destroying holding facilities in 1992 caused the release of these snakes into the Everglades in the surrounding areas. Well, how is this proven? Almost every python found in the Florida wild has been found to have similar genetic traits. Those studies conclude that these animals all came from the same breeding pool. Even so, they are causing a major problem as an invasive species, prompting the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to list them as an injurious species under the Lacey Act, preventing the importation of these snakes into the United States. But it's what they're eating out here that is causing all the problems. In a 2012 study, populations of raccoons have dropped 99.3%, opossums 98.9%, and bobcats 87.5%, all of that since 1997. These snakes can grow big with all this food available to them. In fact, the record breaker was 215 pounds. And at one time, there was an estimated 100,000 snakes here. But that's never been proven, and the number was more likely around 10,000. Even less now, as a study tagged a number of pythons and found that 90% of these snakes died in the unusually cold winter of January of 2010. A few years ago, there was a report that suggested that Burmese pythons would migrate north out of Florida. This report was never peer-reviewed, and it was actually thrown out of court for being junk science. The reality is, they will never migrate out of South Florida. One, because Burmese pythons are non-migratory. Plus, any further north than Lake Okeechobee, and it's too cold for them to survive. So again, they will never migrate out of South Florida. But the python is not nearly the biggest environmental catastrophe to hit this area. But it has become a boogeyman for politicians in the media. But the reality is, is that people are making a lot of money from the presence of the snakes here in South Florida. Politicians and government agencies have increased grants and funding studies for these snakes, but still continue to ignore the real problems facing the Everglades. Truth is, the Burmese python is providing Florida with its greatest resource, tourism. All along the Everglades are advertisements to take a guided airboat tour to see the giant man-eating snakes. And tourism in this area has boomed since the stories of giant pythons began circulating out of South Florida. So the truth is, a lot of the local residents of the area are making a lot of money from the problem, and therefore have no interest 
in seeing them gone. So guys, those are more invasive and non-native reptiles and amphibians that are here in Florida. There's a lot more here, and I'll do a follow-up video to this video later on when I'm back down here in Florida. But you know, I'll tell you, reptiles always get the bad rap, especially when they're non-native. The invasive reptiles here in Florida, yeah, they need to be eradicated. They need to be taken out of here because they are causing damage and they are not native. But in the last video, I talked about how the domestic cat is actually doing Doing more damage to the flora and fauna here in Florida than any reptile or amphibian ever could. But there's another invasive species down here that is causing even more damage, and that is the fire ant. The fire ant has basically carpeted the entire state of Florida, and it's not just in Florida. It's from here all across the southern United States all the way to California. Fire ants are a huge problem, and ground nesting birds, ground nesting lizards, Anything that lays their eggs on the ground is being completely decimated and pushed further to the point of extinction because of the fire ants. So again, there are plenty more invasive boogeymen down here than just reptiles. But what is the reason why reptiles always make the news when it comes to non-native and invasive species here in Florida? Well, reptiles have always been the media's boogeyman. They have always been the animal that is big and scary, and politicians use them to grandstand and say, look what I'm doing, I'm attacking this problem, please vote for me again, and they always use the big scary snakes to do it. Meanwhile, they're doing nothing about house cats, and they're doing nothing about fire ants, because you can't scare a public with cats. You can't scare the public with fire ants. It's the big scary reptiles that always make the press, and they always get the bad rap. Anyway guys, next time I'm down here, I will make another follow-up video because there are a lot more invasive and non-native species here in Florida to cover. So until then, hit that like button on this video, leave a comment below, and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.